the American Athletic Conference on ESPN+. Plus. Non-conference action tonight as the South Florida Bulls host the Bulldogs of South Carolina State. Welcome to the Yingling Center. Jim Lauk, Neil Solon's with you. This should be fun tonight. The Bulls 3-3 three and three, trying to get back on the winning track and looking for some offense. That offensive punch just hasn't been there at times this year. You're right, Jim. I mean, to this point of the season, USF could be 6-0 and if they were averaging in the mid-60s offensively. They're allowing fewer than 56 points a game. So it's up to them to kind of find that tonight against SC State. They look to freshman Caleb Murphy. Hard to remember, he's still a freshman, but he's leading this team in scoring. Hey, he's hit double digits the last four games. He's got nearly a two to one assist to turnover ratio, and they almost need a little more so he can get his other teammates involved and get those guys in double digits too. This is a very young South Carolina State team coming in. Here's TJ Madlock, highly recruited, comes in as a true freshman and making a big contribution early. Indeed he is. If it weren't for the fact that his dad is the head coach, he probably wouldn't be at South Carolina State, but he's playing a huge role early. Tony Madlock comes from Memphis, longtime assistant. And he'll go up against Brian Gregory, now the fifth most winning coach in USF men's basketball history. His team 3-3 three and three on the season, coming off a road loss at Boston College, a game in which the Bulls rebounded extremely well, defended extremely well, but just couldn't get the offense going enough to come up with a victory. Russell Chiwa will jump center against Daquan Williams. Bulls going with their same starting lineup for the seventh consecutive time. And South Florida will start with a basketball. Generally, South Carolina State's going to play a lot of man-to-man. They will back into a 2-3 zone on occasion. I would expect we'll see some of that tonight. They give up 80 points a game, allowed 91 their last time out against Citadel. That was in an overtime game. And the Bulls start with a turnover as Boggs loses the handle. South Carolina State 1 and 17 a year ago, 1 and 7 so far this season. And Boggs with a flat-footed rebound for USF. There are the starters for the Bulls. Green, Boggs, Murphy, Chaplin, and Chiwa. Three of the four returning Bulls in the starting lineup. Chiwa with a big size advantage on Cameron Jones, and he takes advantage. You know, if there's a team that he should be able to get some low post opportunities against, it would be this Bulldogs team. They have a tough time defending down low. Cameron Jones into the paint. And Chiwa with the board. Green thought about the three, pulled it back, and now the Bulls in the half-court offense. Boggs to the basket. Time getting short for the Bulls here. Murphy finds Boggs for an open look. And the rebound taken by the Bulldogs. A really good patience by USF. A lot of contact, Madlock and Green, but no whistle. And T.J. Madlock ties things up. And that's the kind of game that South Carolina State wants to play. They would like a much faster tempo. To this point, it's been played the way USF wants. Chiwa backing his way in. Boggs puts it on the floor, and he's got a chance for a three-point play. Something we have not seen a whole lot of from Boggs. He's been more of a, you know, a step-out shooter and be able to, you know, allow his teammates to create for him. But after missing a shot, this time he put it on the deck. And a pretty good drive and finish. Boggs is only about 20% from the free throw line so far this season. That's where they feel he can really help the offense.
Trying for a three-point play the conventional way here. So the Bulls up three. They had played five consecutive home games, one of them downtown at Amelie Arena before heading out to Boston. Williams gets his own rebound, bogs the block. And the follow by Cameron Jones. He's the top scorer on this team, just under 13 per game. Really athletic kid, didn't get a lot of chances to play at Jacksonville State, but he's really made a home here with the Bulldogs. Murphy over Chiwa. Murphy has not hit a three this season as that one rims off. And that's a shot that South Carolina State will give him until he shows he can make it. From the corner, Omar Krosky. 6'6 six, six sophomore averages eight per game. That's a three, and the Bulldogs are up two. He had a big 19-point game against Georgia. He's probably got the best range of any of the South Carolina State shooters, and that's his spot on the floor where he likes it, in that corner on the baseline. Murphy looking inside. He'll stop and pop. And not many second chances for the Bulls early. Here's Williams, and that'll be a foul on Murphy. That will be his first. That's the second time that South Carolina State's been able to run out and get themselves Bulls a scoring chance. Murphy, that's his first. Team's first. We mentioned South Carolina State giving up 70 per game, but they're scoring mm -hmm. 70 as well. So capable offensive team. That's a different philosophy. I remember, you know, Tony Madlock again, coaching Memphis. They had a little more of an open, up-tempo type performance, and that's the kind of kid they're pursuing here at South Carolina State. Tony Madlock would have seen the Bulls from the bench two times last year as an assistant with Memphis. The Tigers swept the season series with USF a year ago. One of two for Williams. Into the game for the Bulldogs, number 14, Edward Oliver Hampton. And now we see some backcourt pressure. The Bulls anticipated they might see some of this in this game. Moss is in, and he'll get it up court. Pretty good job with it, too. Murphy quickly out after getting the foul. Madlock with the rebound. Quick jumper from three is short by Rashawn Edwards. So far, South Carolina State's done a pretty good job not only getting out in transition, but they're getting back really well in balance defensively. Chiwa with a nifty move, and he lays it in. Russell Chiwa has four. Looked like he also got pushed on the way in. Could have been an and one. So the Bulls back to within one. Here's Madlock. Jones with the three. And Chiwa active on the boards early. Moss in traffic. Bulls like that matchup. Chiwa right to the hoop. That time Edward Oliver Hampton tried to guard him. Chiwa has six, and South Florida's back ahead. Yeah, he might have, what, five inches and 50 pounds on him. He can lean on him all night. Here's Hines with his first touch. And nice job by Chiwa to keep it alive. Sets up Green for the three. And Madlock coming back the other way. I'm kind of surprised as well as she was playing. They didn't get him a touch on that. And he had to do it on his own with the offensive glass. Six points, three rebounds in the first five minutes for Chiwa. Nice job on the offensive boards and the follow by Edward Oliver Hampton. He gets eight points per game on the board for the first time tonight. And that time he went right over the top of Chiwa, who I think is going to get a breather here. Here's Chaplin, and again, they look inside. 
Now Green to the basket. She was the follow, and he'll go to the free throw line. Tight ball game early. Some good outside shooting by the Bulldogs, Omar Krosky. And the Bulls evening it up with the efforts of Russell Chiwa inside. USF down one. Girl was simply ageless. From easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. South Florida has missed their first four attempts from three-point range, but not to worry. The points are coming from inside the paint, thanks to this guy. And Russell Chu was having a really good start to this point. Here's a guy who came out and scored 16 points in the opening game. Since then, he'd been quiet, just 20 total points, or four a contest over the last five, and he's already surpassed that in the first at the first TV timeout or media timeout tonight. He'll get two free throws coming out of the timeout. And I like that he's doing it on both ends, Jim. He's already got two offensive rebounds in addition to a pair on the defensive end. Well, that was a big storyline in the Bulls' loss to Boston College last time. They had 15 offensive rebounds in that game. Out-rebounded Boston College by nine, but the kicker was 15 offensive rebounds and only four second-chance points, so they didn't do much with them. Yeah, when you're rebounding that well, you need to be able to convert into points, especially around the basket. Two for two for Chiwa. He puts USF back ahead, and now he will get a little bit of bench time, leaving with a game-high eight points. Well, now the question is, now that he's off the floor, who's going to fill in and, and provide some punch? Byron Matos in his place. DJ Patrick has also entered for USF. Murphy's still on the bench after getting the early foul. Three is up and good. That's Raheem Gary, sophomore guard out of Dallas. And South Carolina State pretty effective from long range. That's their second three of the half. And this is a South Florida team that really defends the three quite well. Moss through traffic. Nifty move for the true freshman. He ties it up. I th- he saw his most minutes against Boston College the last game. Played 17, and I think he's really starting to grow a little bit in terms of his ability to find the right time to take it to the basket. Bulls right out on Gary this time on the perimeter after he hit the three. So Jones takes it inside, loses the handle. Javon Green coming the other way. High arcing shot, no good. And the Bulldogs on the run. Open look for Madlock. And South Florida coming back. Moss can't get the roll. Actually, it was a pretty good looking transition. Really one of the few times that USF has had a chance to run a little bit on South Carolina State. They've gotten back well. All tied first half here in the England Center. Davis, nice move to the glass. And I'm going to get a foul maybe on Patrick. Now it'll be Matos on the foul for USF. So free throws coming when we return. Hey, let's jump into new memories. Book now at Hilton.com. To new memories, Hilton and our family of brands. Very even first eight minutes or so here at the Yingling Center between the Bulls and the Bulldogs. There's a look at Tony Madlock. We mentioned he had been at Memphis the last three years on Penny Hardaway's staff. There's his record versus USF. He would have seen the Bulls up close twice last year, Neil, 
but he only saw four guys that are still out there for South Florida this year. Yes, it's obviously very, very different personnel, Jim, but what can help him is he does know the style that Brian Gregory likes to play and the tendencies, not with the particular players, but at least in terms of style. You know, Brian usually will play a lot of man-to-man defense, try and put a lot of pressure on you from that regard, and probably some of the offensive ideas and philosophies would be similar, but no doubt the personnel totally different. Jamel Davis at the free throw line. Got them both. South Carolina State's pretty good from the line as a team, just under 70%. And again, backcourt pressure, the trap at midcourt, and Hines works through it. Caleb Murphy has returned for USF. And it's the first zone look for South Carolina State, a 2-3. See if the Bulls can shoot over it. Here's Hines, and he does so. Sam Hines Jr. from the free throw line to tie things up again. Really good identification by Caleb Murphy because against the 2-3, usually the foul line is open, and it was a nice job by Hines to flash to the middle. Here's Davis going to work on Hines, draws the foul. See that look right over the top? That's usually the easiest spot to find. He'll start to move the basketball on you. If it's not open for a shot, then you can start to reverse it and get your wings involved. Hines got the foul, his first, and Davis right back to the free throw line. Native of the Virgin Islands, he's just a freshman, six and a half points per game. Every player for this South Carolina State team is a freshman or a sophomore, except for two grad transfers that play. That's it. Daquan Williams is one, and Edward Oliver Hampton is the other, and neither have been on the floor at the same time. One more for Davis, trying to put the Bulldogs back ahead. Didn't get either one. Murphy picked up the foul early, spent a couple of minutes on the bench, back now, and he's going to go to the free throw line. Foul will be on Rakeem Gary. And this is one of the curious points of Caleb Murphy's game so far this year, Neil, in that he is under 50% from the free throw line. While he has been deadly from mid range on the floor this season. And I think for him to continue to take his game to another level, you want to see him more consistent from the strike. He's obviously capable, and I think it's more mental than it is physical because he's got a really good stroke in that 15 to 18 foot range. One more coming. Bulls making a couple of moves. Daquan Williams checks back in for South Carolina State. Jalen McCreary is on the floor for the Bulls, and there is Chiwa, who has just re-entered. One out of two, and that almost got away from Raquan Brown, just able to collect it. Back and forth, first half. Nice look to the baseline there, but Patrick blocks the reverse. Bulls blocked eight shots against Boston College in their last game. That was the most they had had in a game since 2017. Really good help defense by Patrick. Nice look by McCreary, and Chiwa adds two more to his total. You know, the more McCreary plays for USF, the more I think he's starting to really find himself. He has a really good knack for creating some energy on the floor. That'll be a turnover. Daquan Williams tried to pull that one back and couldn't do it. Lost it out of bounds. Checking in for the Bulldogs, number 14, Edward Oliver. Only the second turnover for South Carolina State. From that regard, it's been a pretty clean first 10 minutes. On both sides, just three turnovers between the two teams. Again, the backcourt pressure. It has not been a really aggressive press, but it's made the Bulls work a little bit, getting the ball up court. Murphy's jumper good right behind the free throw line. 
And Murphy now has three. And I think also the threat of Chiwa down low also allows Murphy that space to take that jumper because they have to now honor him the way he established himself. Biggest lead of the night for USF. Getting his own rebound is Edward Oliver Hampton, and Davis hits the three. I'm guessing of all the defensive sequences, Brian Gregory's most upset with that one for not corralling the rebound. It hit the floor before it bounced to Hampton. Down to a two-point lead for USF. Murphy into the paint, and they're going to whistle him for traveling as that foot slid. It'll be a turnover USF. Just as I said, they were doing a great job protecting the basketball. Their second turnover of the half. Last game before finals week for USF. They won't play again for 11 days. Murphy with the board. Quick to the basket and the spin off the glass, Caleb Murphy. And that has the concern of South Carolina State, that transition basket by Murphy. They take a timeout. Murphy now with five points. And the Bulls with a four-point lead. One thing in watching some film on South Carolina State, they seem to have sequences where they play really good defense and then they, in the, in the half court, and also do a great job in transition. But there are also times where the young team, as you would expect, freshmen, sophomores, where they make mistakes either on switches or, like that spot, they never picked up the basketball. And Caleb Murphy, with his explosiveness, able to go the full 94 feet. And South Florida, here's probably their best stat of the evening, Neil. They're shooting 50% from the floor, 9 out of 18. A lot of looks inside the paint, but a good shooting percentage in the first 12 minutes for South Florida. Well, they're getting to the rim. They're 0 for 4 from 3, which means they're 9 of 14 on two-point shots. And again, they've been taking shots for the general part within their range. It's either been layups or pull-up jumpers where they have an open look. Rakeem Gary with the basketball for South Carolina State. Quick pull-up jumper and Murphy there for another board. Kick out to Sorrell Smith. And now Chiwa with the double team and a quick foul call. It was Davis who got him on the arm. He came across to the weak side to try and help. And Russell actually is, she was pretty good at distributing the basketball for a big man. He doesn't turn it over that much. So if you're going to go to him to limit his ability to score, he's going to create some openings in the corners. And you know Chi was a big man when two of his teammates tried to help him up from the court and it took him two tries. <laughs> Finally got him back to his feet. Out of bounds play for the Bulls. Jameer Chaplin and the whistles blow. They'll get Chaplin on an offensive foul. A little bit out of control. He has played really good defense for the most part this year. The offensive side is where he is still trying to find his way. His first personal foul. Only one meeting in the past between these two teams. It was 15 years ago. Here's Madlock. He just re-entered. Shot clock down to single digits. The jumper from the corner is good. Rashawn Edwards averages less than two points per game, but he cashes in from long range there. It's already the fourth different player for South Carolina State to hit a three. That's keeping him in this game right now. Murphy can't connect. Davis, and he cashes in another one. Jamel Davis. 
He's two for two from three-point range. South Carolina State five out of nine behind the arc. And the Bulldogs back up two. And it's against the USF team that's one of the better clubs in the country at defending the three. Chaplin fighting his way to the basket. He draws the foul. And we'll get free throws when we come back. But right now it's the long range show putting South Carolina State ahead. Tree you can be and handle client calls and school calls at the same time. Whatever life brings, now there's a centrum for that. Five three-pointers for South Carolina State, and that's got the Bulldogs up to here. Let's take a look at the Florida Blue Series history. As we mentioned, it's a short one. November 17th, 2006, here in Tampa. That would have been in the Bulls' Big East era. Robert McCullum was the coach of the team at that time. And USF beat the Bulldogs 82-69. to Right now, South Carolina State's on a pace to score nearly 80 points against the USF team that gives up fewer than 56. No free throws after the foul. It's going to be an out-of-bounds play. You see Jake Boggs has re-entered for USF. And Murphy will put it in play. Chaplin will rarely shoot from three, gives it up. Now Murphy. It's a good matchup, the two youngsters, Murphy on Madlock, and the Bulls come up empty this time. Good help from the weak side by Williams there, blocking that reverse layup attempt by Murphy. Davis has been deadly from three, almost got his third of the half. The USF has gone to a little bit of a smaller lineup just to stay with the three-point shooters. Chaplin with the spin move, McCreary, and it'll go back to South Florida. Nice hands by Omar Krosky to knock that ball out of bounds. Remember McCreary missed some time earlier in the year due to some illness, and I think as he starts to get his feet wet, this is a, a ball where he controls and then just dunks it. Bulls get the shot clock reset, so they've got a little time here. Chaplin is blocked by Krosky. Madlock from three, and it is a five-point South Carolina State lead. When Chaplin went to the floor, he was late coming back, and credit South Carolina State. They took advantage of that opportunity. Chaplin with a tough shot near the free throw line that is touched last by USF. Well, this game's being won at the three point line right now. A lot of contact, no whistle. Well, sometimes you have to play the game to the way the whistle is being blown too, and that's an adjustment. Young teams have to make. Both these teams are fairly young. So far, South Carolina State to their liking. And they've got the tempo a little bit more up to their speed. This is a 9 to nothing run by South Carolina State. Dallas James, a 7-foot freshman, in the paint. And he is fouled on his first touch. That'll be the second on Chaplin. He's run into some foul trouble the last couple games. Spent a lot of time on the sidelines in the Boston College game last time, and he's going to check out now as well with the two fouls. Green poked it away for a moment, and now it is taken away by Murphy, and he's fouled on his way up court. It's one of the few times so far in this half where USF is a very good defensive team has been really disruptive to what SC State wants to accomplish. So the Bulls will have an out of bounds play. And for the Bulls, number 54, Russell Chiwa. Bulls have not scored in a little over three minutes, and South Carolina State has taken advantage. 
USF has gotten Chiwa back on the floor. I would think that the ball's going to go through him down low here. Chiwa, 10 points and five rebounds, leading USF so far tonight. Sets the screen for Green. Now Murphy. Open look for Patrick. And Chiwa, more good work on the boards. I think he had the opportunity to turn right in the lane and put it in, though. Boggs from the corner, and that's a big three for Jake Boggs. That's his second hoop of the game. Got to counter some of the outside shooting from South Carolina State and get some of your own. First three for USF. One out of six from behind the arc for the Bulls so far tonight. Latavian Lawrence in the game for the first time, wearing number four for South Carolina State. Tried to get him the ball, and Murphy takes it away again behind the back, and Boggs is stripped on the way up. Two straight trips where Caleb Murphy really has done something defensively to get USF going. Terrific knock away, little uh, mustard on the hot dog there. Almost able to get it through. So the Bulls will have an out of bounds play. Been back and forth in the first half, but South Carolina State using the three. Built a five point lead. Bulls have chipped into that a little bit. Patrick just can't get one to fall. No, he's had a tough time since that big game against Georgia Southern, where he had six threes to find his stroke. Madlock kicks it inside. Dallas James going to work. And the Bulls come away with the ball. Knocked away from Green. Bulls were looking for a foul. They will get the basketball back. You see USF is starting to push a little bit. I think that to this point, South Carolina State latter part of the half is having a tougher time getting back in transition defense. Green gets his man airborne. And the Bulls starting to assert themselves on the offensive boards. Another open look for Patrick. And James with a rebound. And great ball movement. You can see that DG Patrick is almost trying to will it to go into the basket instead of confidently shooting it. Bulls down two, three and a half to go in the half. Boy, quick hands again from Green almost pried it away. Madlock a three. And another opportunity for the Bulls to tie or take the lead. The shots are there, and Patrick, shooter's got to keep shooting. Well, and that, he puts USF ahead. That time the shoulders were squared. It was much more of a confident look. He knew he had plenty of space and time, and we'll see if that gives him the confidence he needs to get on a little run. His first points of the night. Lawrence trying to answer, and he banks one in. I didn't know the bank was open at this hour. From straight on. You got to call that, right? He did Gets eight points a game. He's a 29% shooter from behind the arc, but wound up banging that one home. Chiwa going to work against James, and he draws the foul. 7 threes for South Carolina State. USF starting to heat up as well. They've got a couple, thanks to Patrick a moment ago. But then here we go, off the glass and into break. Hope you seize the season. Sift through the holidays with signature lattes at Duncan. America runs on Duncan. Two-point game here in Tampa. There is Dallas James at seven feet. Biggest guy on the Bulldogs team. And, Neil, I got to believe that 
Tony Madlock thinks he's the best guy to deal with Russell Chiwa. James has played six minutes so far in this game. Prior to tonight, the first eight games for the Bulldogs, he only had three minutes of floor time. Well, when you don't have a whole lot of size, you go to it when their big guy is impacting game. On the other end, I'm curious how Brian Gregory can catch the three-point shooting of South Carolina State. That's a team that was averaging just 30% from the line, or excuse me, from the three-point line for the year and making just about six threes a game. They've got seven threes here in the first half with two and a half to go. Seven out of 13. That was the first miss of any kind for Chiwa tonight. He's now three of four from the line, four of four from the floor. One point game, another low scoring battle for the Bulls. South Florida has been there before this year, almost every game in this general point range as we approach halftime. So Chiwa might have a double-double by halftime the way he's going. Trey Moss back in the game. Boggs can't find a shot. Green through traffic, and he'll draw the foul with three on the shot clock. Well, if that's on James, well, they, they called it on Brown instead, but I thought they were going to get James. If that was the case, it would have taken him out of the, out of the game with his second already. First trip to the free throw line for Green. He had a streak of 26 in a row from the free throw line at George Mason at one point in his career. It's actually nice to see him take the ball to the basket because, what, 60% of his shot attempts have been threes to this point this year. And he puts USF back ahead by a point. Bulls have been better from the free throw line so far tonight as well, seven out of nine. Madlock pulls up over Moss. Boy, you can see why he was so highly regarded coming out of high school. They had the right guy recruiting him. Absolutely. Here's Boggs with a three. Jake Boggs, maybe his best half of basketball for the Bulls. He's got nine. Well, he had made only four threes so far in the early part of this season. He's got a couple already. Bulls with a two-point lead, and Moss will get whistled trying to stop Madlock. That will be the first on Moss. Another encouraging sign for the Bulls offensively. They only averaged 25 points per game in the first half. Sitting on 34 now, but South Carolina State hanging right with them. And they're doing it in different ways. They're getting to the foul line and they're shooting the three well, which makes the team tougher to defend because they can stretch the floor and use the up fake to be able to create lanes to the basket. Only one out of two for Madlock, who's an 86% free throw shooter. Final minute of the first half, and there's another foul on James. That will be his second. Trying to come over the back of Chiwa to break up that pass. Bulldogs foul number 42, Dallas James. That's his first team foul. Well, they've got him as one, but we have him... In the scorebook with two. Yes, I, I would agree. And he is coming out of the game, so obviously Tony Wa Tony Madlock has it as two also. Chiwa to the free throw line. Doesn't get the one and one. A lot of teams will not push and try and create a, a two-for-one situation here. I'm curious how quickly... South Carolina State tries to get a shot off. They get a good one and they miss the chip shot, but coming back for the rebound is Williams and it sets up a three and Brian Gregory wants a timeout. That's the second time the Bulls have let up a big hoop when a rebound got away from them. And South Carolina State makes them pay with their eighth three-pointer of the half. 
And there are some times where a team will, you know, beat you to a spot or go over the top, not go over the top for a foul and create. But this is a defensive rebound that I'm sure Brian Gregory is telling his troops needs to be secured. Russell Chew has played a good half, but I'm sure he would be the first to say, I got to hang on to that rebound. Second three of the half for Rakeem Gary. And that puts the Bulldogs back up here in the final minute of the first half. Bulls cannot run the shot clock out here. 34.8 left in the half, as you see, and they'll have the full 30 on the shot clock when they inbound it. But this is not what you would expect from this South Florida team that was giving up only 55 points a game and only 27% shooting from behind the arc. And they get burned for 8 of 14 from three-point range in the first half. I'm sure that that's probably the thing at the top of the agenda for Brian Gregory going to half. First, he wants to make sure they get a really good possession here and close the half offensively on a high note and then get back defensively if they tie this game or take the lead with a three. Murphy will take control for USF. Little zone trap. Now into the half court offense as the clock continues to run. And back into a 2-3 zone here. So a confusing look for Caleb Murphy coming back in. Murphy almost lost the handle. You see the shot clock, green fires, and the Bulls don't draw iron. Not a really good possession. I also would credit Tony Madlock, though, for the change in the defense there to create some confusion. So the Bulls come away without a shot, and the Bulldogs will have a little over three seconds to work with here. And I think probably what they're going to do is make sure they have the correct time in this situation, which almost will act as a timeout for Tony Madlock to set something up. And he's going to get some more time also. You saw they moved it from 3.1 to 4.8. That should be correct because the, the shot, the shot or, or the clock started, I think it was at 34.8. So they're going to have some time here, especially inbounding on the side. There's what they have to work with. And unless something unusual happens, South Carolina State is going to go into the locker room with a lead at halftime. Brown will get it in play. Gary is a long-range threat, but he's taking it to the hoop. And the Bulls fortunate as that one rattles out. But an impressive first half for South Carolina State. They bang home eight threes. 24 of their 36 points from behind the arc and brian gregory and the bulls are down two as we head to half neil they've got some work to do defensively we didn't think we'd say that no not at all i mean this is seventh team in the country in scoring defense coming into the game their offense has been fine the defense has actually been the issue today going to break with the bulls down two against the bulldogs of south carolina state Halftime in Tampa, South Carolina State came into this game 1-7, and, and they sure didn't look like it in the first half. Played a really good first 20 minutes. Let's take a look at the highlights. The Bulls getting their points from inside. And Russell Chua may be a little bit unexpected because he's not been scoring the basketball lately, but he did it in the first half in a lot of different ways. He did it in the low post, then he comes to the high post and is able to use the dribble to get to the goal. And I thought his teammates did a really good job of finding him underneath as well. Here the look after the pump by McCreary and the pretty bounce that leads to the dunk. 11 points, six boards for Chiwa in the first half. For South Carolina State, oh boy, get ready for some threes. They had eight of them from six different players. And really surprising because this is a USF team that defends the three really well. They allow 26%. South Carolina State 
shooting just 30% from three-point land before the game. Well, tonight, they're having a career half, at least, from the three-point land. 57% from behind the arc in the first half for the Bulldogs, including one off the glass. And let's take a look at the Bloomin' Brands halftime stats. Hard to believe the field goals are exactly the same, but the three-pointers really make the difference. Bulls getting a lot of points in the paint. As we mentioned, that was mostly Chiwa. And how about the bench production for the Bulldogs? Well, because they're doing it mostly from the three-point line. They've got six different players among those eight threes, six different players with a three-point shot. So it's not the starters, it's not the bench. you got to defend everybody at that line. South Carolina State looking for their first win of the year over a Division I program. They're halfway there. Going to break at the half with the Bulldogs over the Bulls by two. Cheesy marinara, baked apple, or hot and melty five cheese with our not new but still delicious twists. Carry out Domino's new oven baked dips and twist combos or any three topping pizzas for $7.99 each. There's your halftime score. The Bulldogs of South Carolina State leading USF by two here in Tampa. Second half adjustments. Neil's got them. Well, first of all, Russell Chiwa dominated on the inside for USF. But South Carolina State needs to deny him and front him more often so he not give him the chances he got. But also, South Carolina State's doing it with the three-point shot. They need to get in transition more where they often succeed. They've allowed or scored just six points in uh, fast break opportunities tonight. For USF, they are an extremely good team defending the three. That's not been the case through the first 20 minutes, so they want to get back to that. And not only that, I think they want to be more disruptive on defense because they're not creating turnovers, nor are they forcing South Carolina State to take shots they don't want to take. I think so far the shots that the Bulldogs have gotten have been within the rhythm of their offense. The three-point line has been the story. Six different Bulldogs have hit just one, and look at that. That's what they were doing on the season from three prior to tonight. Now, if you're USF, like you said, Neil, you know you got to defend better there, but there's also got to be part of you saying the chances that that's going to continue through another half of basketball are, are probably not that great. They're probably not great, but you still have to defend well, and you want to force South Carolina State to have guys taking shots that they don't like to be at or, or spots on the floor where they're not as comfortable. Bulldogs start with a basketball. South Carolina State one and seven on the season. The Bulls three and three. Nice ball movement until Green poked it away, but then he stepped out of bounds on his way up court. Back to South Carolina State. This is really good help defense at time and really good wingspan by Green. I'm actually kind of surprised they call that a change of possession because I didn't think he really had it because by the time he caught it, he was on the sideline. And I think that's what Brian Gregory's arguing. Why do you reset the shot clock? And they've got the full 30 on the clock right now, and if they do change that, it would be fairly low in the clock. Yeah, but I mean, if you start with, at 20 minutes, it should be eight seconds left. Now they've dropped one second off it to 29, and that's not going to satisfy Brian Gregory. No, I can see why he has a beat, because he basically had a knock away and caught the ball on the sidelines. That's, that's not possession. And now they do change it to eight, so that is a big difference. That's a correct call. And it's good that the crew, we, a good crew tonight so far, you know, got together and made the adjustment. Mike Nams. Uh, Ron Groover and uh, also Devin Price. So eight to shoot. And the long three is good. Rashawn Edwards with the ninth three of the night. And that actually was really good defense at that point, too. And the shot clock is off again here, so they're going to change it. This was a long range three. I mean, Murphy probably has to jump out a little bit more on that and, and deny, but 
I mean, forget how much time was on the shot clock. That's still almost a quarter court shot that he took. Edwards is a guy who shoots 16% from three point range tonight, two out of four. When you're hot, you're hot, right? Whole team, nine out of 15 now, 60%. As you can see, they're fiddling with the clock again here. I think they probably need a little bit more than the 20 that you see on the shot clock. If he made the shot with, what, at 19, it should have been, what, 1933? Yeah, up to 26 now. There you go. So the Bulls get six seconds back on the shot clock and four on the game clock. Boggs had a good first half for USF. You see Williams now fronting the post a little bit, trying to get a little ball denial. Green with a nice move, and the lefty drops it in. Javon Green with four. And again, the shot clock is having some difficulties. Well, this is a lot of stop and start for both teams here. Hard to get a rhythm in this first 90 seconds or so of the second half. You can see, though, in the first couple of possessions that adjustments have been made. First, USF overplaying a little bit in the passing lanes, trying to prevent the wings from getting those shots. And you saw the post fronted. What that also should allow USF to do is the driving lanes on the baseline, where Connor Green took advantage and hit a nice pull-up. There's the adjustment on the shot clock. And that's where we are at in this second half. Three points South Carolina State lead. And the quick hands from Javon Green. You got that right in the computer. Fortunately, I got it before you got the computer. <laughs> it was a deflection off the computer. I think everything is all right, seven. good yeah, thing you good. had the water bottle almost closed. Ooh, Not totally good. closed. <laughs> well, that's the hazards of being back down on the floor, but we're glad to be here after a year in the rafters thanks to COVID last year. Chiwa almost tied it up. Running out of time, and that should be a shot clock violation. They didn't stop play, but the Bulls wind up with the basketball either way, and again, the shot clock is back into single digits. So there's got to be a mechanical problem with the reset. I can't believe that's operator. I'm no. just going back down to that seven or eight second remaining mark every time they try to reset it. But unfortunately for USF and South Carolina State, it has resulted in a lot of stoppages here. And it's a matter now of who handles it better at this point in time. You're all gonna deal with adversity at some point during a year or a game. There's the adjustment as you see. Both teams with a lot of games coming up. We will take a look at the upcoming schedule in a couple of moments here. But for South Florida, this is the game that they will kind of live on for the next 11 days. It's finals week next week, so they won't play again until the 14th of December. Hoping to head into that break on a winning note. Madlock pulls up over Green. Madlock now in double figures with 10. Boggs passed up the three. That's a tough shot. And the rebound taken off the floor by Edwards. Yeah, it's one thing to take a three, but when you do, you want to get a better look at the basket. Now Edwards. Deep in the corner, this three is no good, and Green cannot pull down the rebound. It will go back to South Carolina State. I think I was a little bit fortunate for the Bulldogs. I thought that Jones gave a little nudge in the back to Green there, leading him to knock it out. 
20 seconds now on the shot clock reset, and boy, Green just gets drilled on the screen, and that'll be a foul on Daquan Williams. First on Williams. Green's really been disrupted defensively the first few, uh, few possessions, though, of this half for USF, and I think he, he can have a major impact going forward if he can continue to do that. Both teams have led by as much as five. That's where the South Carolina State lead is now. Bulls had a five-point advantage in the first half. Blocked out of there by Daquan Williams. Madlock through traffic, and the whistles blow. And they're going to get Bulls Javon Green. One, Javon Green, that's his first team first. First team foul and first personal and an out-of-bounds play for South Carolina State. One of the few times we've seen SC State push a little bit. Bulls trailed by two at the half. Now a five-point margin. Chaplin trying to poke it away, and Chiwa gets his seventh board. Good defense there by Boggs in the low block. Open look for Boggs. And the Bulls keep it alive. Really good identification by Murphy in terms of finding his shooter on the wing. Just wasn't able to knock it down. There's Murphy. That's his spot. And Caleb Murphy now has seven. And that offensive rebounding leading to the scoring chance. Bulls back to within three. Around the screen, and I think they're going to get Williams again. You can see him swing the hip out a little bit on Murphy. Second foul on Williams. Here's Caleb Murphy in his sweet spot offensively. <laughs> Maybe a moving screen there by Russell Chua. They didn't call it. He didn't really make a ton of contact, and that's probably why they let it go and let them play. But it allowed Murphy to get some space. Bulls trying to get a run going here. Boggs looking at Chaplin. Can't get it in. Now Chaplin comes outside. And Boggs unable to pry that rebound away from Cameron Jones. The look was everything the USF wanted. They just weren't able to knock the shot down. Krosky with a three. That's his second. It's the Bulldogs' tenth. And meanwhile, South Carolina State just continues to knock shots down. This is something they haven't done all year. Their biggest lead, six points. Green on the run, and he takes another big hit. It's going to be Williams again. It'll be a foul on South Carolina State, but the outside shooting onslaught continues by the Bulldogs, and they've built a six-point lead. This round's on me. Holiday better with 5G from America's most reliable network because everyone deserves better. Well, Neil, sometimes statistics can be deceiving. Sometimes they can be hard to decipher. Sometimes they jump up and hit you in the face, and the three-point shooting in this game is pretty dominant for the Bulldogs. It's really the only area where they've been successful tonight. Nearly half their shot attempts have been from three. They're a bad three-point shooting team for the year, just 30%, but tonight, totally different story. They've been composed, and they've knocked down the open shots. Here's Boggs. Nice play coming out of the timeout on the feed from Murphy. Could have been a foul, too, on the inbound play. Boggs, the second bull in double figures. He's got 11. You notice it's the bigs who've been able to score for USF to this point. A lot of points in the paint for USF. Green thought he had that ball poked away from Jones, but he's going to get a foul instead. Really good job to receive, and then the body control is, it looked like Jones got a little swipe on the arm. On the other end, the second foul of the game on Javon Green. Pass three. 
The seven-footer James has re-entered, playing with two fouls. He's matched up on Chiwa. Davis puts it on the floor and comes up empty. Good defense again by Boggs with the partial block. Green in transition. Good ball movement, open look, and the Bulls unable to convert. Again, the ball movement was as good as you could ask where they just have been able to knock down open looks. I mean, Boggs wide open in rhythm, top of the key. Still a four-point lead as Madlock goes to work. Now Murphy on the run. Draws the foul and hits the shot. Again, the body control by Caleb Murphy. And he gets the Bulls within two. He's the fastest player on the floor. He's very difficult to deal with, and he's identified the fact that when he gets in transition, the Bulldogs really can't stay with him. The foul on Gary. And Murphy with a chance for the three-point play. Ten for Murphy to go with four rebounds and four assists. And it's the fifth straight game he scored in double figures. Five to nothing run for USF coming out of the timeout. Madlock's three is no good, and now South Florida looking for a lead, and it's Murphy all the way. Caleb Murphy taking this game over, and South Carolina State wants a timeout as the Bulls reclaim the lead. If you don't stop the basketball, Caleb Murphy is going to take it all the way to the goal. He's done that twice in a row now, and there's no reason not to go to goal if South Carolina State doesn't get back defensively. The Bulls run off seven in a row in the last minute 19, most of it Caleb Murphy. South Florida on a seven to nothing run, and it's been a highlight reel run for Caleb Murphy. It really has, and he's done it really the same way. He's been able to get himself in transition. He's been a one-man wrecking crew when he does. Out with the rebound, looks up the floor, sees that SC State isn't getting back defensively, and all the way to goal. So let's see if the Bulls can keep this momentum going, or if the Bulldogs have another good sequence in them. South Carolina State just one and seven on the season, but they have done a remarkable job behind the arc, 10 out of 19. And it took this run by Caleb Murphy and the Bulls to get USF back up on top, first lead of the second half. They've been fighting uphill a lot of this game, really since the latter portion of the first half when South Carolina State got on another three-point run. And now the question is, can USF find a way to limit those three-point shots, at least good looks at three-point shots? 30 of South Carolina State's 44 points behind the arc. Chiwa double-teaming, almost got it away from Krosky, and Krosky responds with a three. That's a big-time answer by the Bulldogs. For a moment, it looked like Chiwa disrupted the play, and even when the play broke down, Krosky able to create and shoot it and hit it. May have been inside the three-point line. They're giving him two as Chiwa can't finish. And Davis with the rebound. First time he's missed from the field. He was a little bit off balance as he received. Got a little bump too. And now they do change that shot to a three-pointer a moment ago. So it's a two-point lead for South Carolina State. Murphy to the basket, scoops it up, and he'll go to the free throw line. I actually think it's going to be a goaltender. Yeah, let's see. That is the call. Watch so the hand in the count cylinder. The points. There you go. Yeah, that's on Jamel Davis. So two more for Murphy. He leads all scorers with 14. Miscommunication there. South Carolina State fortunate to get that pass back as Gary retrieved it. 
Bulls coming out a little bit more defensively, and they left the middle open, and Daquan Williams with the uncontested dunk. So after all those threes, they defend the pick and roll, but didn't stay with the guy who set the pick. Boggs gets it to Green. Bulls down two here. Murphy with the runner. And the rebound taken by the Bulldogs. Tough fall away jumper that time by Murphy. Jumper from the corner, no good, and bogs the rebound. Credit to South Carolina State, though. The Bulls had this place hopping on that 7 to nothing run, and Bulldogs had an answer for them. Chiwa trying to tie it. And the follow good by Jameer Chaplin, his first points of the game. It's set up by Chiwa that time. He really can just back his man down. I don't, again, don't think that anyone from the Bulldogs can really stay with him in the low block. More shot clock issues here. They'll have to reset it once again. This will allow Brian Gregory to change some personnel here as Hines and McCreary will come back in. There's the issue with the shot clock. To buy a little bit of time, too. Extra time going into the media timeout for Chiwa to get a breather. Closing in on a double-double, 11 points, 9 rebounds. Got a lot of really good things. He has missed his two field goals here in the second half, though. I think South Carolina State has done a little bit better job of ball denial, and they're getting a little more physical with him when he does make contact, and uh, the officials have let them play tonight for the most part in the low block. You can see they have settled on 26 on the shot clock. So it Here in the second half, it has been a struggle for USF tonight. They trailed by two at the half. They did build a five-point lead at one point in the first half, but every time USF has tried to pull away, South Carolina State has had an answer. More often than not, yeah, South Florida has been playing from behind. At least the way they're playing tonight, South Carolina State's going to be a little bit tough to contend with in the MEAC. You look at the standings and think, oh, it's going to be Norfolk State's league. They're 9-1 and one so far this year, but SC State plays like this. They're going to be tough. Here's Gary with a three. McCreary keeps the rebound alive, and Murphy comes up hobbling. As we go to break, Murphy goes to the sideline in some pain. We'll find out more about that when we return. Tie game, second half in Tampa. I'll get better everywhere. And that's how you change the game for good. I said that's me. Here we go, here we go, here we go. All tied up second half. Neil, let's see if we can see what happened to Caleb Murphy. Well, it's not 100% clear on that reach, but you can see him almost grabbed, so I'm not quite sure if he knocked into someone just prior to that. As you can see from that point on, he was kind of hobbling during the possession. He was trying to shake it off on the bench. I would imagine he's if he comes out here, oh, he is going to come out. Nope. He's going to sit for a little bit. He was on his feet during the entire break. It was the under 12 media timeout, but Neil, I think also they stopped the game and went to the timeout because they saw him pull up lame a little bit. So it may be a case where the Bulls don't have a choice here and he's got to come out for at least a little bit of time. It looks like he's at least going to get checked out in the tunnel area. In the meantime, big minutes for Trey Moss and an immediate USF turnover, and Lawrence is fouled on his way to the basket. Well, that's South Carolina State taking advantage of an even younger point guard. Moss will get the foul. Second on Moss. And free throws coming up for Latavian Lawrence, who is a 73% free throw shooter. 
been very seldom that South Carolina State has been to the line tonight. Only eight times, and they've struggled there. Four out of eight so far. Lawrence's fourth point. TJ Madlock checks into the game for the Bulldogs. TJ Madlock back in. Lawrence puts the Bulldogs up two. Now some full court pressure. Not surprised. Bulls have protected the ball quite well. They only have five turnovers in this game. Green hits down after contact with Madlock, and Madlock is going to get Bulldogs the whistle. 20, TJ Madlock, that's his second. That'll be his second. And the Bulls will have an out-of-bounds play. Not really a true post-in for USF at this point. McCreary the closest to it. Hines going to work on Lawrence, and he's drawn a foul. That'll be the first on Lawrence. You can see kind of a more open set used there by USF. Another shot clock reset, and the Bulls will inbound. Back to Chaplin. Close Murphy, five seconds. Murphy, by the way, back on the bench, sitting near the coaches. Javon Green with the jumper. And the rebound taken by Lawrence. Bulls trailing by two, a lot of time left, but this has been much more of a struggle than a lot of people anticipated it would be for USF. There's the block by McCreary, and it'll go back to South Carolina State. You mentioned at the top that USF had eight blocks against Boston College, and good help there by McCreary to come over. That's the third block of this game for the Bulls. Madlock will inbound. James and Chaplin are already comparing elbows just outside of the paint. It's about a seven-inch height differential between the two. So Jameer is going to try and get everything he can on James to make sure he doesn't get some space. They went in and talked to Jones and Hines instead. Those guys were a lot chummier than the other two were. Knocked out by the Bulls. where USF is going to have to rely a lot on the defensive end with Murphy on the bench. That's the question mark is whether he can come back or not. Now he's on the stationary bike as the Bulls block another shot and Javon Green with a basketball. Chaplin and the whistles blow. That's an offensive foul on Chaplin. It's the second time in as many halves he's done that. He's picked up two of his three fouls when he hasn't been quite in control going to goal. So he'll check out with three fouls. There's Murphy just trying to stay loose. It's hard to tell whether it's like a hip pointer or, a, or even a hamstring injury or whether it's a little lower. Came out at the 11.45 mark, so he's been down about a minute and a half of floor time already. And the Bulls' momentum is kind of evaporated since he left the game. That'll be a travel. Moss with some nice defense, pinning Williams to the baseline. And Williams turns it over. As mentioned, the defense is certainly picked up for USF, and it really needs to at this point. South Carolina State has gone three minutes without a basket, but the Bulls haven't capitalized. Patrick travels. Bulls with the turnover. So USF has started forcing turnovers, but without their leader on the floor, they're starting to make a lot of unforced errors on the offensive end. Seventh turnover for the Bulls. 
and the third in the last two minutes, 15 seconds. Green comes out defensively on Madlock. Lawrence through traffic and Green is gonna get whistled trying to double team and take that ball away. And that will be his third. Yeah, so now you have three on Green, three on Chaplin, and Murphy coming in hobbled a little bit. So here's Murphy's return. Game high, 14 points. I would imagine they test him defensively pretty early. It was really his basketball game in the few minutes before the injury occurred. Jones with the runner. Lawrence with the offensive board. Bulls with the strip. And South Carolina State comes out with it. Madlock kicks it back to no one. Here's Green. Edwards trying to chase, and Green will go to the free throw line. Boy, that could have been a breakaway uh, a fl a flagrant because I didn't think that there was really a play uh, by Edwards made on the ball here. It'll be his second foul. And Green to the free throw line, one of the Bulls' better free throw shooters. Two for two on the night. And 78% on the season. He'll have a chance to tie it. Edwards made just enough of a reach toward the top of Green's body that there was no call of the flagrant. Bulls now 9 of 12 from the free throw line tonight. Much improved on their season mark. All even at 51. Sorrell Smith coming in. He's only had a couple of minutes of floor time tonight. But he'll replace Green for Brian Gregory. I think with the three fouls, you probably want to at least get him through the eight-minute timeout. That could have been a moving screen. Tied up at 51. Lawrence with a three. And McCreary the rebound. Bulls looking for a lead. Murphy kicks it back to Patrick trailing the play. And the whistles blow. And the Bulls will have a chance to reclaim the lead from the free throw line. And you see how Murphy there leading a little bit of a mini transition. Lawrence gets the foul and Patrick to the free throw line. Here's what we were talking about from the free throw line. You see the Bulls on the season. Not very good in the loss at Boston College, but tonight quite effective. And Patrick tacks on one more make. Well, you look at the ability of some of the shooters they have. I think a lot of the guys probably believe they're better than the numbers have shown to this point of the season. I mean, Patrick is a guy who usually shoots from the perimeter. Green's a guy who usually shoots from the perimeter. Generally, those guys are going to be good free throw shooters. Patrick got them both. He's got four points, make it five points on the night. We said defense is going to be the key for USF getting back in this game. They've held SC State without a point for three minutes. And forcing them into some tough shots. Edwards misses from the baseline there. A lot of contested jumpers or jumpers that are out of rhythm. Two-point USF lead. Sorrell Smith working on Jones. A lot of contact. McCreary trying to save it, but it's a Bulls turnover as we hit the eight-minute mark remaining. So it will go back to South Carolina State, and you just got to feel like we're going to go down to the wire with this one. Bulls by two. And home good. Here's a look at the Tampa General Hospital upcoming schedule. We'll look at the Bulldogs first. High Point is next, and then number one, Duke. 
That's going to be a big challenge for them, but you know they'll enjoy that opportunity. They've got the Citadel again, a team that they just played and went to overtime with in their last game out. For USF, exam week next week, so Austin P is next, and that'll be on December 14th. That'll be our next broadcast. Then down to Sunrise to play Florida. And then a Hawaii trip. They'll have BYU among their games there. Back at home from Mississippi Valley State on December 29th. And look at that, conference play, January 1. Be here before we know it. Indeed. Uh, and while exams are coming up for USF, that twosome of Florida and BYU is quite an exam in itself for December. That's going to be an interesting one in Sunrise against the Gators, and the Bulls will travel right from Sunrise to Hawaii for their series of games out there. Two-point USF lead. The three is up, and they're finally starting to slow down a little bit as South Carolina State. They're one for their last five behind the arc. And I think a lot of that is some of the pressure that USF is putting on South Carolina State by forcing them maybe to take the shot a hair quicker than they would like or a foot further than they would like. Bulls trying to build a little breathing room here. Sorrell Smith, and he's out of control with it, and it's a turnover. Turnover is mounting up for the Bulls a little bit now. That's number nine. If you're going to go to the basket and you're in the air, you have to have an idea where you want to go beforehand, not while you're up in the air thinking about it. And that's what happened to Sorrell Smith there. Here's Madlock kicking it to the corner, and the three is short. Murphy the rebound. Bulls on the run. And Murphy is fouled by Edwards. That will be the third on Edwards. So Murphy forcing the action again. Going coast to coast. Didn't get the hoop that time, but he drew the foul. And that'll put him at the line because South Carolina State's over the limit. In fact, they're one from the double bonus. Murphy two out of three from the free throw line. You see McCreary taking a seat. She was back. Tony Madlock trying to get his team over the top here. They've played a nice game tonight. One more for Murphy, who now has 15. He's closing in on his career high, which is 20 against Memphis, the team, of course, that Tony Madlock was an assistant coach for last year. Bulls really done from the free throw line. They don't have a field in the last five minutes and ten seconds. But with free throws, they have now built a four-point lead. Davis to the basket, and Boggs denies him. Davis gets it back. Great second effort by Jamel Davis after the block by Boggs. They definitely let them play there, but Boggs has to know that they've been letting a lot go all game. you got to be stronger with the basketball, and... Credit to South Carolina State for fighting through and creating that chance. Back to a two-point game. Murphy needs some help. Now Javon Green, who has just re-entered. Tough shot there, and he doesn't draw iron. Madlock with a rebound. Madlock out of control, but he manages to get the ball into the corner, and Omar Krosky strikes again. Krosky has 12 all on three-pointers. Chiwa was wide open but couldn't collect it. They go to the corner instead, and the miss by USF. USF has lost its composure a little bit on the offensive end. Bulldogs by one. Taken away by Green. One-on-one with Madlock, senior on freshman. And let's see which way this is going. I think that should be a charge on Green, which would be his fourth. That will be his fourth. Foul number one, Javon Green. That's his third foul, team six. Again, they announce it as third. Number 24, Javier Chaplin checks back into the game. So we'll see if it's third or fourth. The scoreboard reads four, but... Regardless, it's a turnover, and the Bulls settling in on defense again. 
The box score has three, so I guess perhaps that's right. Well, they're staying on the floor, which would be an indication that it might be three here with over five minutes to go. Madlock to the basket. And Chiwa with the rebound. Double-double for Chiwa now, 11 and 10. And here's Green, and this time he gets the block. It'll be a foul on Krosky. And that should allow him to shoot two because that's 10 fouls in South Carolina State. Second foul on Krosky. Bulls now seven minutes without a basket, but a chance to reclaim the lead again from the free throw line. Well, this really has been a grind for USF. Green now five out of five from the free throw line. He's just one of 11 from the floor. But he ties it up here with just over five minutes remaining. Well, South Carolina State still has a 12-3 edge in threes, but the difference at the line is 15-6 right now in USF's favor. And the Bulls have just been outstanding from the line, 16 of 19 in this game. If they pull this out, that might be one place you really look to. Mm -hmm. Here's Krosky to the basket and a foul. Considering how much they've allowed in terms of hand checking, I'm surprised they called that. John Chaplin, and that will be his fourth. So Chaplin, who has only played 19 minutes in this game because of intermittent foul trouble, now will have to be careful with four personals. Krosky, a 70% free throw shooter. And not only has USF shot it well, South Carolina State is not. They're now 6 of 11. Two big misses there. The Bulls allow the offensive board, but get away with it. And Williams had an easy tip in. Could have given the Bulldogs the lead. Instead, it's South Florida by one. Would expect us have to go back to Chiwa and try and reestablish him down low. There it is, Green with the entry pass. Chiwa working in with the hook and he left it short and the rebound by Krosky. I think he doesn't realize what an advantage he has down low. Madlock shot, no good. They're going to get Green again, I think. And that would be his fourth. Foul number one, Javon Green. Well, it's interesting, Neil. This rotation of Bulls players goes 11 deep as a result. There's not a lot of high minutes played stats for USF, and partly as a result, they haven't had any foul trouble pretty much all year long. They haven't had a player foul out of a game yet. But, boy, they've got a couple hanging on the edge now with Green and Chaplin both with four. And Madlock puts South Carolina State back ahead. And other than Caleb Murphy, USF now has just three field goals this half. And none in the last eight minutes. And the Bulls had similar games against North Carolina A&T and Hampton. They survived them both. Will they survive this one? Davis with the rebound. I think Brian Gregory likes that the U.S. have got the ball in the hands of Chiwa, but I don't think they want Russell hit taking jump hooks, which he's done the last two trips. Madlock goes cross court. Here's another three. And Murphy with the rebound. And that was an open look and a really good skip pass. Bulls looking for the lead, and Brian Gregory wants to draw something up. USF will take a timeout here. With three minutes, 23 seconds to go, Javon Green getting some instruction after his fourth foul. We'll be back. Bulls down one. Dine-in or to go? Olive Garden. We're all family here.
Both teams really struggling offensively. South Carolina State two for their last 15 from the floor. And, Neil, that's a good thing because USF is struggling even worse. Without a field goal for nearly nine minutes, and it started with the injury to Caleb Murphy. Since that point, USF has not had a field goal. or right about there. And now the question is, what have they drawn up to try and create a good scoring chance? I think if they go through Russell Chila, and it looks like he's coming off the floor, they're probably going to try and find a way to get Caleb Murphy going instead. McCreary is in, Chiwa out. Two Bulls playing with four fouls, Chaplin and Green. USF down one. Here's McCreary. Green thought about the three. Ten to shoot. Murphy to the basket through traffic. And it's South Carolina State with a rebound. And good defense by South Carolina State. Again, they've allowed both teams to be pretty physical on the floor. Murphy took it to go, hoping to get fouled on the way in. Underneath, Krosky, and it's now a three-point game. And with the worry about the three-point shot, Murphy turned his head, and Krosky went for the back door. Boggs with a three, made a little space, and hits a big shot for USF. Boggs with 14. Well, that ends the drought. More than that, it was a huge pump fake to get his man in the air and create the chance to tie it up. All even again. Krosky is blocked by Chaplin. It will go back to South Carolina State. Looks like Boggs either got a an elbow or or shot in the sternum he's he's fighting it right now Boggs and Murphy have combined for 30 of the Bulls 60 points Krosky from the corner and that will be a held ball and it will go to USF we think of all the shots that South Carolina State has made they got an open look from the corner and it was Krosky who's hit so many threes more than any guy on the roster for the Bulldogs, and he wedged it. 12 out of 29 now from three for South Carolina State. At one point, they were 11 of 20, so they've missed eight of their last nine. Better defense, certainly. That's helped a little bit. Bulls looking for the lead under two minutes. Boggs posting low. Green. And again, no second chance until the steal by Green. And Davis with the block. And Green is going to foul out, I believe, trying to get that ball back. Made a really smart play to be able to create a shot. But then frustration got to him. First bull to foul out of a game this year. He leaves with eight points. Also takes away the Bulls' best free throw shooter in a potentially tight finish. And I think probably best defender. Boggs with a good find. That mid-range jumper unable to come up with. And then the steal. And then out of frustration, fouling Davis after he got a shot blocked. So Davis to the free throw line. 65% free throw shooter. He's two out of four from the line tonight. And it is a one and one. Big make. That breaks the tie. Bulls brought DJ Patrick in to replace Green. And Davis will get one more. He's just a freshman. Six and a half points a game. Clutch from the free throw line. Ninety seconds to go in a little zone. Chaplin playing with four fouls. I would imagine at this point you want to find Boggs on the wing. Five to shoot. Tough one for Murphy, and he comes up big. Or let your top scorer just find an opening. Boy, that was a tough shot, hand in his face. Everything's even again. 
as we approach one minute remaining in regulation. Remember, South Carolina State went to overtime in their last game before losing the Citadel. And a timeout taken by the Bulldogs. 58 seconds to go. And South Carolina State will have the basketball with 16 seconds to shoot. Neil, what are you drawing up defensively, and how do you protect Chaplin from getting that fifth foul? Well, I don't know if you're worried about as much as protecting as you are about disrupting. You know, I think you have to be wary of the pick and roll right now and the three-point looks off creation on the dribble on the wings. That's really where USF has been burned tonight on the defensive end. So I would assume that you're going to see some sort of pick and roll early in this sequence. I would think they're going to hedge a little bit on the pick and roll, try and force a bad pass, and get South Carolina State out of sync here. So it's going to be down to the final possession. USF trying to get to four and three. They have the governors of Austin P coming in next, but not for 11 days. South Carolina State is not that far away from a big, big challenge facing Duke. This has been a hard fought game tonight and probably Tony Madlock and his crew of safe to say not given us the game the bulls thought they might have tonight yeah they've certainly earned some respect that's for sure two very young teams and i think south carolina state at times has been a little bit more composed bulldogs will inbound on the side davis will put it in play Here's Edwards, had a couple of threes in the first half. Here's that screen. Now to watch the clock, five to shoot. Edwards kicks it over to Madlock, a two. And Chaplin with the rebound. Bulls cannot run it out. Now you allow Murphy to create. I would think they may even call a timeout to set something up or not. Looks like they're gonna let Caleb Murphy run the offense. Great himself, man on man. Bulls have two timeouts remaining, and they will go to the timeout. You see the difference in shot and game clock here. And the Bulls will talk this over with the possession and a chance to take the lead here with 23 seconds remaining. Well, it's in Caleb Murphy's hands here. This is where you want a young player to make a good decision. If he's able to turn the corner and get that look 12, 15, 18 feet, so be it. If not, and he can find a way to get a look for Boggs, who's been probably the best supporting player for him on the floor tonight, then that's probably your second option. And maybe your third is Patrick, who did have a big three in the first half. Murphy with 18 points. Seven of 13 from the floor. Boggs has chipped in 14. Remember one of their primary outside shooters, Javon Green, has fouled out. Tony Madlock coaching him up on the other side. There's Green, who left with eight points. You notice a slight change of the game clock moved from 23.2 to 25.5. Chaplin will put it in play. And we'll see what the Bulls have drawn up. Murphy goes to work on Williams. Turnaround jumper. The follow by Boggs, USF takes the lead. Shot clock turned off. Madlock with a basketball. A two would tie, a three would give them the lead and a timeout taken by South Carolina State with 6.1 remaining. How about Boggs hitting the offensive boards to give USF the lead? 
Well, first of all, it's two defenders that had to come to Murphy. That gave Box just enough space and the balance. Fundamentals. He goes up balanced with two hands and uses the window. South Carolina State let a lot of time expire before calling that time out. And obviously, if you're the Bulls, Neil, you're worried about the three-point line. You have to be. You are. And, you know, you only have the two-point margin. I think what they were going to let Madlock kind of run the offense there, but the Chaplin... Probably the best defender remaining for USF was on him man to man, so they probably want to create some sort of switch early in the possession and give the chance to either create off the dribble or kick for one of those open looks. You three. see the timeouts. That was the last one for South Carolina State. So they've got to get this ball inbounds. They can't call a timeout. Bulls have one remaining. And any foul would be a two shot. Edwards to put it in play. Still looking, now Davis. The three, no good. Three seconds left, a held ball on the rebound. It will be South Carolina State's basketball with 1.5 remaining. I thought it was really good pressure on Krosky here. Boggs with a little more height to make it tougher to take that shot over the top. And now you're almost looking at just a catch and shoot. Chaplin got a piece of that ball and Led to a held ball. This is not a timeout. They're going to look at the clock and see if they're comfortable with 1.5 or if they feel they need to make an adjustment here. But with the possession arrow, the ball does go to South Carolina State. But precious little time remaining for the Bulldogs. Yeah, it's not quite a catch and shoot. But you probably don't get more than one dribble. And USF just got Russell Chiwa in the game. I wouldn't be shocked if they put him over the inbound in this situation because it's a seven-footer. It would be tough to throw over the top of that. You can't move because you're on the sideline here. It'd be a really tough pass to be able to get a good look. If they don't adjust this clock, you would think another thing they will not get two of is shots. You probably got one shot, but if you're the Bulls, you just got to make sure you don't have a very last second putback allowed that could decide this game. And that could also be another reason to have Chiwa on the floor just in case he does lead the team with 10 rebounds tonight. Tough defensive assignment for each USF player because you have to be attentive, you have to be aggressive, but if you foul, that could be ball game as well. No question about that. You, you know, you've got to be really, really careful in this situation, but at the same time, yes, you have to pay attention to detail. On the other side for South Carolina State, they probably got it in the hands last time of the right guy. Krosky took a three-point shot. He's been their best three-point shooter tonight. They've added some time. This might even allow for a follow-up shot because you're looking at 2.7 instead of 1.5. That totally changes the complexion of this final possession. And you may want to focus on Krosky, but remember, six different Bulldogs have hit at least one three. It will be Chiwa defending Edwards. Edwards trying to see how far he can go back. Well, you got what, 5, 10, 7 feet. I mean, it's a really tough inbound play. Here we go, 2.7 seconds. Tough shot, turn around, good. One-tenth of a second left. Madlock with a remarkable three-pointer from the corner to give South Carolina State the lead. I don't know how he possibly hit that. Well, that's how they've been shooting much of the night. That's their 13th three-pointer, but that one was special. Madlock, the freshman, with his second three of the night. Murphy was right there. You know, the interesting thing about that play is right before Jameer Chaplin switched, before the play started, Jameer Chaplin switched with Caleb Murphy. They had Chaplin on Madlock there, and they switched it up, and 
I thought Madlock's the better three-point shooter or the better the guy more likely to get the basketball. And, you know, maybe it would have been a little tough if he had a little more height over the top there. Who knows? They're checking the clock again, and the Bulls hoping that they're going to get more than point one here. But even if they do, it's going to be catch and shoot when yeah. they get the ball in. Boy, this would be a devastating Three. defeat for USF and a tremendous win for South Carolina State. They have not had a win over a Division I foe this year. First time in 15 years these two teams have played. We told you from the beginning of the broadcast about T.J. Madlock and what a prized recruit he was coming to play for his dad. And what a remarkable play. They've gone to .6 seconds, but are the Bulls going to have to go the length of the court? They are. So you just got to hope for an open look at the basket. Sorrell Smith comes in. And the Bulls take their last time out. The other thing you can do is you can try and drop a play where you force a foul on the inbound. Because at this point in time, it would be a two-shot foul, and you could take the lead right back and win the ball game if there is a foul on the inbound. Now both teams are out of timeouts. You see the time remaining. And the Bulls trailing by one after the three-pointer by T.J. Madlock. Live by the three, die by the three. They've lived by it tonight. 13 of them, 39 of their 65 points. And now the Bulls need one of their own unless you're going to throw it to the rim and hope somebody can leap up and tip it in. Whatever you do, you got to do it fast. And we'll see what the Bulls' strategy is here. Once it starts, it's going to finish because neither team has a timeout left. You really almost have to hope to get lucky that you can cause some type of either you're taking a prayer from midcourt on a catch and shoot. Or are you hoping that somebody fouls you on the inbound play accidentally? Bulls have to go the length of the floor. Boggs will inbound it. Davis will defend him. Can the Bulls pull off a miracle here with six tenths of a second to go? The long throw down to Chaplin, he can't control it, and that's the end of the game. And South Carolina State pulls the upset, their second win of the season. T.J. Madlock, hand in his face, turnaround three from the corner to win it for the Bulldogs tonight. That is an awful impressive shot and an awful, awful impressive game for a kid who's playing for his dad. It's not easy to play for for dear old dad. He made the big play when it mattered most for sure. 15 points, five rebounds for Madlock. And for the Bulls, a real disappointment heading into the 11 days off for exam week before they face Austin P on December 14th. And I would, Madlock so clearly a, our player of the game too. Yep, absolutely. You gotta go with Madlock hitting that three. So T.J. Madlock is the USF Federal Credit Union player of the game for that reason. Can't imagine a better reason than that. A terrific play that brings his team an improbable victory tonight. Yeah, that's, that's turning a defeat into a W at the very last moment. So the Bulls fall to three and four. And they'll welcome in Austin P. on our next broadcast December 14th. That'll do it for tonight. A disappointing one for USF as they allow 39 points from three-point range. Final score, South Carolina State 65, South Florida 64. For Neil Solon's Jim Love saying good night from Tampa.